A week ago, my son Luke graduated from college. And you too might have just graduated. Well, you too might have just graduated, or you might be graduating from somewhere soon. But just remember, you're never too old to learn. This next Bible reading that we're going to hear this morning is from the book of Ecclesiastes. And Ecclesiastes starts this way it says, These are the words of the teacher. Son of David, King of Jerusalem. So let's see what the teacher has to say today in chapter 11 of Ecclesiastes. Cast your bread upon the waters, for after many days you will find it again. Give portions to seven, yes to eight, for you do not know what disaster may come upon the land. As you do not know the path of the wind or how the body is formed in a mother's womb, so you cannot understand the work of God the maker of all things. I hope your teachers were a little more clear than Mr. Ecclesiastes here. What in the world does it mean to cast your bread upon the water and find it again later? In my book, all you'll find is soggy bread. And who wants that? Some scholars say that that this verse is about an economic investment. You put something in and later you get something out. But the only way I can figure you get anything out of soggy bread is to feed the ducks and then later go duck hunting. (laughs) Other scholars have said that this lifts up good works. There's an ancient Egyptian proverb that's somewhat like it that says, cast a good deed into the river and when the waters go down, you'll find it again. Sort of what goes around comes around or do a good deed and it will come back to you. That may be true but I still don't see what it has to do with soggy bread. Now, the best that I can figure out is that this verse has something to do with letting go and trusting a God we can't always figure out. It may make as much sense as soggy bread, but in the end, we'll be blessed. And graduates or not, that's something to hold on to as you make your way in the world. For many in the world, It just doesn't make sense to be a Christian. Everything we say and do is as crazy as these words about soggy bread. Why would you give your valuable time to God? Why would you give your hard-earned money to Christ's church? Why would you bother serving others or teaching children about the Lord or worshiping on your only day off? Why would you give any of your stuff to God? To many people, being a Christian makes as much sense as soggy bread. But you know better, don't you? You know this world doesn't belong to us. It belongs to God, as Deuteronomy 10 says. To the Lord your God belongs the heavens, even the highest heavens and the earth and everything in it. Cullen sent me a video message by Pastor Tim from Gethsemane Lutheran Church in Maplewood. And in that video, Pastor Tim makes the point in a, in a very creative way. He started out by asking for the wallet of the other pastor that was up front, but since Pastor Bill is out leading worship in Andover, I'll need to find uh, some other volunteers. So, you guys have a wallet with you? I just need one. There we go. Thank you. Now, I have Tim's wallet. Not that it's going to do me much good. I have Tim's wallet. I possess it, but I don't own it. I have to decide what I'm going to do with it, and you know that I'm going to give it back to Tim because it's not my wallet. I hold it in my hands, but it's not mine. I don't own it. Tim owns it. So I'm going to give it back to Tim. See, there's a difference between possessing something and owning something. And really, the same goes is true for all that, that we possess. This is my wallet. And I've got lots of things in my wallet. I've got some cash, not a whole lot, but this 
Not really my cash. It's God's. And I've got some credit cards. I even got a church credit card. Either way, not mine. It belongs to the Lord. Got my fishing license. Let's me enjoy the wonderful lakes and rivers and ponds of, of Minnesota. But who do those lakes and rivers belong to? Belong to God, really. Even the pond on my family's farm. Not mine. It's the Lord's. Here's the title to my truck. It's got my name on it. Not mine. God's. Even my marriage. My lovely wife, I don't own her. <laughs> Our marriage is a gift from God. Our marriage belongs to God. Same way the kids. Those of you who are sending off graduates, uh, you know it gets a little, uh, a little pricey. But still, they belong to God. Everything belongs to the Lord. We get to hold on to it. We get to use it. But it really is all God's. <laughs> 